fucking thing that it's uh, Yom Kippur is around the corner. I want to review a couple of halachot. I sent yesterday that email. I want to review the halachot written here and uh, and answer some questions people had specifically about the, the issue of uh, using scope or uh, or uh, uh, brushing teeth on Yom Kippur. That people ask, you know, what are the sources uh, for that halacha? So. But let's, let's go in order. So first of all, the uh, the there's a concept of having to eat. That's a mitzvah to eat on Erev of Yom Kippur to prepare for the fast, and it's, it should be taken not literally. It's not that they're one of the six hundred thirteen mitzvot to eat on the ninth of Tishrei. It means that it's a it's a good uh, it's a good deed or to prepare yourself for the fast by eating and. Also, a warning to people who would, who would take, who would extend the fast another day, because some people did that. Some people say, you know, let me start fasting from the from noon. The Hakim said, don't do that. You have to eat and be ready, uh, but of course, do not do not overeat, do not exaggerate. I've seen people going erev uh, kippur, going to eat every every couple minutes mitzvah mitzvah. Let me do berakat amazon again. Don't go crazy. Everything has to be has to be kept within you know, within with moderation in, in, in a logical way. Also, I think it's recommended to do uh, the sordam of seket not at the last minute to finish just before the the fast starts, but give an hour or two. You have time to digest, you have time to relax, and then if you want to have coffee or fruits or anything, uh, it's not a, then you can have it. <clears throat> Some people also uh, are very concerned, you know, running to. Uh, Floss their teeth and brush their teeth before before the fast. So, God forbid, something got stuck between their teeth and will be released during the, the prayer. You have to not to worry about that. It's not it's not considered uh, breaking your fast, even if something uh, did get there. Um, kaparot. That's what we're talking about. Erev Kippur, doing kaparot with chickens. That is uh, according to Shohan Aruch. Uh, it says very clearly. This minhag must be stopped. It has it borders on paganism, on Avodah Zara, with the chicken. People think that they transfer their their uh, they transfer their sins to the chicken. In the past, they used to give the chickens to the to the poor people in town to eat them. Today, nobody was going to do that because first. First, we call people got used to get uh, clean chicken. Nobody is going to uh, to clean the the, new, the the chicken from feathers and all that. Second, because people feel too proud, of course, to to have that. You're not going to to give a poor person who needs food, uh, you know, that uh, newly uh, slaughtered chicken you just out of people. The one that yeah. The, the <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's hard work to do to do that. Besides that, uh, there are problems of Hilul uh, Hashem. In my opinion, you know, the the people see that and say, "What are the Jews doing?" In Brooklyn, last year, a couple of years ago, they they set up at the corner of Avenue P and uh, and Ocean Parkway by the by the famous Ben Yosef Synagogue, where they have minyanim all day long. They set a, a fence and they start doing shaita in the street, and you have Jews, non-Jews living there. And the smell, the stench, the pollution, the, the traffic, all this, no, even traffic, even just if you want to do it, you want to find a farm and go to it and make sure that, that the chicken is slaughtered in a kosher way and that you eat the meat and you don't throw it away, fine. To do it in the middle of the city and to cause uh, traffic problems, Erev Kippur is the biggest Hilul Hashem and the sin that should not be done. But unfortunately, people continue with that. But the best way to do Kaparot, is with the money. Do the kaparot, put the money in tzedakah, someone will benefit from that directly. Um, yeah, it's, it's about time that they will share, that they will stop it in Israel also. Um, <clears throat> very clearly. Because, because right away, it's already 500 years ago, he said, yeah. But the Ramah right away said, Some people wrote that it, you have to do it. Uh, that's even though know, once the minhag settled in, you cannot change it because it's minhag vatikin. Like I, uh, you know, I mentioned yesterday when in the class we spoke about the uh, um, 
the tefillah al parnasa tefillah al parnasa appeared in the 1600 already 100 years later the hida writes min hakadum it's min hakadum it never uh, appeared before anyway um, we spoke about an apology the, the vidui uh, the main the main focus of the vidui should be uh, really the ben adam le and, uh, and how we ask for an apology sincerely um Candle lighting on, on Arab Kippur, even though we, today everybody does it, and they light the candles at Ner, Ladlik Ner Shunem Kippurim, it's a recent minhag. It's not mentioned in the Gemara, because the, the whole idea of uh, lighting candles Shabbat. on Shabbat was to have light, because you need to sit and eat. You want to eat with light, but if you don't eat and go back to sleep, why would you waste? For them, it was a waste of energy. It's like taking good oil and you burn it away. So they didn't light candles. Even on Yom Tov, there was no the candle lighting for Yom Tov is not mentioned in the, in the Gemara, but we do it. We do it today, and people light Ner Neshama. This is a nice minhag uh, to is a memorial candle. Um, so now we come to Yom Kippur. There, are, throughout the, the fast day, you will find prayers that refer to what we call Hamisha Inuim, five uh, uh, afflictions. The way we afflict our soul and. Uh, uh, abstain from things that we usually do, and those are achila ushtia are usually grouped as one, rechitza, neilat sandal, sicha, kashmi shamita. So achila ushtia eating and drinking, sicha is applying creams, oils, or anything like that to the skin, uh, wearing leather shoes, uh, sexual relationships, and. Uh, a washing or a bathing. So all these are the five enuim, but they're not of the same category. The only uh, the only one which is mitde oraita, which is considered a biblical prohibition, is eating and drinking. That's the only one. All the rest were added by the rabbis. It's now not to say that we don't do them. Of course, we follow everything, whether it was instituted by the Torah or by the rabbis in the time of the Mishnah. But the difference is that when you need to be a little lenient, you can be more lenient with the things that have to do with the Rabbanan, with the Rabbinical, than with those that come from the Oraita. So therefore, when, let, let's start with those things. Uh, washing or bathing. So the Shohan Aruch says this, Asur li chotz b'yom ha-kippurim ben b'chamin ben b'tzonen. You cannot wash yourself on Kippur, whether with hot water or cold water. Va'afilu lehoshit etzba'o b'mayim asur. Even to put your finger in the water, you're not allowed. But even if it was a complete prohibition in the Torah, no matter what, you cannot do it. But the Shohan Aruch says, if your feet or hands or the rest of your body is soiled, either with, uh, uh, with bodily fluids or, uh, or with mud or whatever, let's say it was raining, you came to the synagogue and you're covered with mud, uh, or... Uh, they want to have his, uh, uh, his nose is bleeding, you're allowed to wash it regularly. The only type of washing which is forbidden is one which is done for pleasure. So now, the says, So we do Nitilat Yadayim in the morning. Only the, for the top of the fingers. Um, but the, he says in the next halacha, uh, if you go to the bathroom to relieve yourself, mutarli chotz davali adav miluch lachot. He allowed to, to to wash regularly. He does does not make a, a restriction. The Rama adds asuf it's beotav only the top of your finger. But uh, here we have an halacha that let us interesting thing. Mishu istenis ve'en da'atomi yushevet alav ad sheikaneh panav b'mayim. Mutar. What if you're, uh, you know, like we are today, more uh, concerned about our hygiene than people used to be in the past, right? We are today. We have more, uh, you know, water are is available. Water is available regularly. You wash uh, several times a day. So he says, if you cannot. Uh, so anyway, he says, if you cannot. Concentrate. If you feel if you feel uncomfortable without washing your face in the morning, wash your face. 
So Yom Kippur, Shohan Aruch says, you can wash your face in the morning. And obviously also, the concept of Yadav Meluch Lachot, back in the day, when you said your hands are dirty, was only referred to what you could see with your, with your naked eye. Today, we're more concerned about germs, about cleanliness. So if you feel that you need to wash your hands, wash your hands. If you want to do it with a with uh, uh, hand sanitizer, do it with hand sanitizer. But of course, you cannot apply hand sanitizer to your face. So that's, uh, that's, not, uh, that's not an issue. Um, so, <clears throat> the, uh, so that also leads us to the issue of, uh, of using... Uh, of using a uh, mouthwash or brushing your teeth. So on that halacha, the Shohan Aruch says clearly, uh, right? Mishu is tenis v'nda atom yushevet alav ad sheikane hapana v'mayim. You're allowed to wash your face. He says asur lichot zvi v'ma kipurim. That's the rema. You cannot wash your mouth on kipur. Kemoshin it be'er le'ail siman taksa z'iv gimel. So he sends you back to the halachot of ta'anit. The halachot of ta'anit. The Shohan Aruch says, "Mishet darko lichot spiv b'shaharit lo kasher lemeibad hachi." If you if you usually wash your your mouth, it's not uh, it's not good to do it. It doesn't say it's forbidden, right? It says, "Aval b'taanit yachid shari kevan shepolet." But if it's your own personal taanit, it's okay. Va'afilu es mamayim shohai tzeter merevayit, and even if you do it with a large quantity of water. Now. The, the difference and the reason that Shohan Aruch didn't, didn't bring it on Yom Kippur because they already mentioned it earlier but they talk about washing your mouth with water because that's the only thing that they could use back in the, the day back in the day to wash, wash their mouth there was nothing else today you have scope scope is not portable it, you cannot drink it if you're thirsty and you go you know you go into the desert with a bottle of scope yeah, yeah not a good idea right same thing with uh, with uh, with a combination of uh, to, you know, toothpaste and water. It's not once you have it in your mouth, it's not portable. If anything is swallowed by mistake, it's not considered drinking. And we add to that the kind of istenis ve'enda atom yushevet alav. We got used to brushing our teeth once or twice or three different people do differently, but at least once or twice a day. It's it's a hok veloy avo. So for a person to feel like that coming to bed, can it definitely enda atom yushevet alav. Mm-hmm. So this is this is allowed. So that's regarding uh, washing your mouth. The, the um, now about <coughs> pills or anything. <coughs> people take pills, medicine on Yom Kippur. Um, recently, Rabbi Nachum Eliezer Rabinovich, is a leading posek in Israel, came came out with a psak, which is a very important psak, that all nursing women should drink on Kippur. Meaning, they take little sips with uh, with uh, intervals of about four or five minutes, and drinking less than thirty cc uh, every time. Now, uh, it used to be that they say many caught me'ubarot many caught lo shoto that they have to finish the tahani, and unless they they feel the need. The, the problem is, and with modern science, we understand it better. It's not about how you feel. It could be uh, the there could be damage. Uh, that is is not seen. You think, oh, I could still, I could still do it, when you, when you can't. And uh, for a nursing woman to lose her ability to breastfeed it could be detrimental for the health of the baby. You should, she should keep uh, nursing as as much as possible, healthy. There's a an extreme uh, situation where um, this is quoted by uh, Rabbi Aaron Marcus, who was a German doctor. Who became a uh, Hasidic and joined the uh, the uh, Rabbi of Rujin. They call you know the uh, it was an, an exception a German yeke in a, in a Hasidic court, uh, court. And he says this. Uh, the, the rabbi of Rujin died on Kippur because of dehydration. The doctors who checked and said because he refused to drink water until the end of the day. So now, it seems, so somebody asked me about that, said it seemed like a, a very lenient to say that all, all uh, nursing women, and as it applies also to pregnant women, should drink water, the uh, shorim, during Yom Kippur. 
And the answer is that you, we could rely, we always look for the li- more lenient opinion to rely on, to make it uh, accessible and available for people. So there is one opinion of Rabbi Yaakov, Yaakov Hagiz, for the book of Al-Qut Tanut. He was born in Morocco in the 1500s, uh, came to this, came to Eretz Israel, Maram uh, Hagiz, and when he was from El Gorashet Sfarad, and he said that it's it seems like water is not included in the prohibition of not eating and drinking on Kippur. He doesn't rule so the halacha. He says it is very probable. Why does he say that? Because because water does not sustain you. Water is just uh, people used to drink water just to prevent dehydration. It's not something that you do for pleasure. So Rabbi Tzadik Zilberstein, who is the prosek of Benebrak, says that we probably can rely on on that when we are, we allow people to drink l'shiurim when they need to. So this is something that people should have in mind. Also for people who feel dizzy or feel uh, you don't have to wait to the point where you fall down or you or you look or has a shallow faint, but know that you could rely on that drinking <coughs> uh, small quantities in intervals. So the same thing goes for people who need to drink pills. Uh, there were cases of people almost choked on pills because they tried to get to take them without water. It's okay to wash it down with a small amount of water. Uh, and I would say that someone who really would suffer from uh, uh, not not having uh, caffeine on, on Kippur, that really puts him in a, in a dire situation, he needs a pill to also do it if necessary. Um, again, with a small quantity, it's not considered, not considered uh, drinking, and you could rely on the opinion of uh, Rabbi Yaakov Hagiz and Rabbi Zilberstein. So, one more halakha, has to do with uh, with leather shoes, you know. In some in some synagogues, they would people would go, uh, you know, directly to those who wear leather shoes and would rebuke them, you know, why you are, you know, it's not uh, it's inappropriate, I guess, if they break halacha midoraita. So here, it's important to know the difference between rabbinical and biblical, right? The the prohibition of wearing leather shoes is rabbinical. Why why do we have this? Why did they add this prohibition? Because shoes were considered the ultimate luxury. So even today, shoes are for men, for women, for, of course. But even for <coughs> men, if you look at the, what are the what are the uh, uh, status symbols or luxury items for men, it's uh, you know watches and jewelry. But before that, it was shoes, and today still shoes are considered. Uh, so if you had shoes, you lived in luxury. You had leather shoes, so you have to put them aside for kippur. But this is a rabbinical prohibition. Embarrassing someone publicly is a biblical prohibition. So to go to someone in Kippur and to tell him, you know, you're not doing right because you're wearing these shoes and you might cause him embarrassment, we are breaking a biblical prohibition. So we have to be careful with that. Also, in some synagogues, they, uh, the, the bracha of Kol Nidre, when you, when you take the sefer of Kol Nidre, the bracha should be recited by the person who is holding the sefer. That's how it should be done. But in many synagogues, the rabbis were not happy with the fact that people who would, bought, who would buy the, the Kol Nidre Sefer, sometimes for a very high price, uh, were wearing leather shoes. So they invented a new halakha that the person uh, buys the honor of carrying the Sefer Torah, but the rabbi or the hazan are the ones who say the bracha. Right? So this is, not, this is inappropriate. The person is willing... To, to give and support the synagogue, not because making donations. For him, it's a mitzvah. Give him the whole mitzvah. It's not the fact that he's wearing leather shoes <laughs> does not take away from uh, the mitzvah that he did. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at Shuhan Aruch, it says, Hahaya kol shloshim yom muteret linolet asandal. Hahaya is a woman who gave birth. Called it's from the Tanakh, uh, from Shemot. Ki hayot hena. So she gives new life. So that's why we call Hahaya. Uh, for the first month after giving birth, she's allowed to wear leather shoes uh, because she doesn't feel comfortable walking on the ground. And anyone who's, who's sick and needs to wear shoes can wear leather shoes. I mean, today it's different because we have so many other different uh, uh, types of man-made material people could use. 
But just to know, you write it, that's a halakha. And he says, Mutar kol adam in all sandal, mehamat akra v'chayot sebo. And if you live in a dangerous uh, area that you cannot do, I mean, if in your option, either barefoot or leather shoes, leather shoes because you don't want to uh, be beaten by a scorpion or something like that. V'im yardu geshamim v'rotze lelech lebeto mi bet ha-kneset o lefech v'hu istenis, Mutar lin ol min alav ad shemagiyah limkomot. The Ramah says, you have to remember, the Ramah, Ramah Moshe Yisrael, actually this is from Ariel, Rabbi Yaakov Weil, same, you know, period in Poland, they lived in, a, in, a, uh, in an area where in October, used to be already very cold, uh, and their option was either leather shoes, or things made from straw or rags or stuff like that. So you have to go from, from the synagogue home, how are you going to go? Are you going to walk? Barefoot is the East Indies. So they say, wear your shoes to go in the street, but when you come to the synagogue, take them, take them off. Just to have this thing in perspective. We'll try to continue more on Monday. Bezal Hashem. Bo'chadunai. Nohalam Yibamein.